Я запускаю и говорю, поехали, поехали. Поехали. To begin with, I would like to um, introduce uh, the thought that for effective overcoming of coronavirus, two things are needed, um, testing and tracking. Um, and my first question to Marta and to Anna is, uh, what do you think has to have a preference or what has proven to be a more, uh, let's say, credible, reliable and effective method of actually um, overcoming at least the first wave of uh, the corona crisis? Of course, the World, World Health Organization um, instructs the countries to test as much as possible, but we have seen in recent months that there are not enough tests. And uh, when people um, call to their doctor when they feel a bit sick, the doctors usually say, you are not that sick to get tested. Tracking system came up now. And that's uh, the thing that is quite dangerous, in my opinion. On the one hand, of course, we hear the arguments that uh, we are being tracked all the time by big companies like Google, Facebook, uh, and other. Uh, on the other hand, um, the tracking by Google and uh, Facebook is not the same thing as being tracked by the state. The state that has repression mechanisms that can use uh, this uh, privacy, this tracking of the privacy of the person, not in a very proper manner. Um, of course, I agree with you. And uh, the reason that countries did not test their people enough, uh, it's actually because for a lot of a lot more mortalities that we would like to see currently however i think that the tracking system which belgium uh, along with other european countries want to implement can actually be beneficial in a way uh, if it goes along of course with data privacy regulations in february when the situation started to occur in china nobody tracked anyone who arrived from the contaminated area of the disease right from China nobody cancelled the planes nobody checked who is coming in or uh, who people get in contact with and majority of um, Chinese tourists in February traveled to Italy for instance right uh, for their holidays and um, nobody tracked where they go which was the actual reason why Italy in my opinion was the first one to suffer so much and currently um, in the situation where our freedom is at stake, I would much rather personally sacrifice a little of my privacy to be more free, if it makes sense. Um, I feel here like in between the two fires, uh, so actually now <laughs> we see that discussion is going in a direction that it might be dangerous and a discussion that uh, sacrificing a bit of privacy is justified because then we uh, all feel safe collectively. Mm -hmm. um, I would not uh, kind of judge and uh, uh, align with one position or the other, but just bring um, the most up-to-date numbers. And by the way, the numbers are always changing. So if you uh, watch this video and uh, the numbers do not drive up, this is because we're living a very dynamic and uh, fastly developing world. So the idea is not to give a precise statistics, but rather to support the arguments with the numbers as they are today. So, and the numbers are the following. Um, more, uh, in more than 30 countries, the governments have made an effort to develop the applications which would be um, following citizens, tracking citizens. In many cases, it is semi-manual, uh, like for instance, it's Belgium, uh, 2,000 uh, trackers were um, hired and their task is to uh, call those people who were already tested positive to ask um, who, what were they, their contacts and then to follow up with those people and prevent them that they were in contact with a, um, with a person tested positive so that they self-quarantine quarantine themselves. But this is um, in Belgium. Um, worldwide, um, governments have chosen uh, many different uh, tactics, many different um, uh, tools, instruments like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, just Google data. And I feel like the um, governments from actually trying to regulate these transnational companies um, 
now they actually become their customers. So they actually need to rely on companies like Google, like Facebook, all the telecom companies, and of course, mobile operators are different in every country, but actually governments are now procuring this data or actually ask uh, those companies to share this data to provide public health and to provide public security. My question now is what is the gain for those companies to share this data and then kind of store, like invest a lot in storing that big data? Uh, and then what? Like how, are, how can they use uh, this afterwards? What do you feel? Big data is the source itself. It's, uh, it's like uh, land is the source and today the data, the information, the big data is the source as well. And uh, uh, big companies such as Google, Facebook and others are using it very intelligently. And again, what I'm saying um, for the companies is always beneficial. They know everything about us. They can sell us more products. They can earn more money on us. When they share this data with the state, the state gets the police, the border guards, get, get all the information on us, which we want or which we don't want them to have. And this is not one time thing. This, they even if they tell us that they delete all, all our data, big data is not there to be deleted. They're going to be stored somewhere and they're going to be used by someone. One risk is cybersecurity, is cyber attack on our data, which already is happening everywhere. And uh, like European Parliament suffered big data loss uh, last week. Um, and many other airline companies are suffering the loss of data of their customers, of the um, uh, those who were flying their airlines. We risk to have the same, the same leak of our data to someone who can misuse them. But if, you know, if we are all on quarantine, we are all there together. But if we are repressed, we will be repressed one by one. And no one individually, and no one will even see that. You will know, not even know that. And giving, giving up a bit of privacy, if we think it is temporarily, it is very naive. The state will never give us back our right. We fight the the people have fought for their rights and freedoms for centuries and they are taking and keeping those rights and as soon as they give up a bit of a right it will take again years and centuries to get it this bit to get it back and that is the danger for me yeah anna so actually yeah marta's argument is that losing freedom is much easier and, and happens much faster than regaining them back do you feel that you might be able to regain back and possess all your data or um, would you actually kind of also agree to give up your data uh, like in a long term knowing that this might be used with, with the purpose of protecting your health but future mm -hmm. with other purposes? Um, well, personally, I think that um, this idea that we have privacy in general, even in current situation, it's complete illusion and uh, of course, with development of tracking apps, it might become even scarier with the idea that many more companies will have much more data. But I think the first um, the first thing is that it's personal freedom to choose whether to use the app or not. So I would believe that it's a personal freedom whether you want to expose your data or more of your data basically than you already do by going to bank, by giving your fingerprints when you do visa, by going to a doctor and giving all your information. It starts from the moment you're born in this digitalized world and until the end, the end of your days, somebody will know 100% where you eat, <laughs> who is, who's your best friend, what you watched last year. And I think that um, one of the most important part, points for me is that um, I would much rather be able to travel now when I'm 23 or go see my family or go see my loved ones and give up some of my data or some information maybe where I buy my toothbrush but I would have an ability to move freely I would say. But isn't, isn't there a risk that today it is for that you are giving this 
in your vision you're giving this part of privacy to travel but it will be misused and turned against you when you want to travel and the freedom will be taken from you to travel as such i mean situation in which we are now is temporary situation i believe it's not a situation this is going to last till the end of our life but the privacy we give it will be till the end of our life it's just given it's given it, it would, we will be tracked mm -hmm. by the state and how they are going one thing is commercial mm -hmm. Okay, this is the whole different story. Mm -hmm. And another thing is the state that has repressive mechanisms. I had a conversation with my friend about the thing about the privacy uh, mm -hmm. versus uh, economic uh, suffer because he would rather also mm -hmm. uh, give in his privacy in order to go to work mm -hmm. and in order for all of us to travel. And uh, my argument was the same, that it's dangerous to give to the state that has repression mechanisms the privacy or the, the freedoms. Uh, because of what I already mentioned, um, and whereas he said that we are in democracies, and in democracies it doesn't work like this. In democracy, um, you can gain back your rights which you give up. I'm afraid this is also illusion, that the, because democracy is the thing we are fight, we fight for. It's not given. It's not something that is already there. It is mm -hmm. something we fought for, and um, when people come to power that want to use. Uh, the democracy to turn this to authoritarianism, uh, they will um, use this instrument, the privacy, the application, the tools to do so. It's like, for example, if you are coming to Belgium, you're traveling by car, no one is asking you through which countries you travel. But, uh, um, okay, in the quarantine is a bit different situation, but when there is no quarantine, uh, they don't know. I came to Belgium from Luxembourg, or I came to Belgium from Holland, or from Germany, or from France. But with you giving your data to the state, the state will be knowing where, on the, which places you were. And they will say, aha, you were on this place. But if you were on this place, you will not be able to enter the, the country. It's Again, it's a primitive example of giving in your data, bit of data, one by one, which state will be able to pick something to create new law to forbid you something. You see? Let me chip in here and say that what you are describing sounds like we arrive at new levels of inequality and new levels of actually, let's say, segregation, uh, where somebody is kind of allowed to cert to do certain jobs or to travel because either he, he has immunity or he has vaccinated and therefore um, he is um, kind of allowed and the others will be at disadvantage. So, uh, of course, we want to think of ourselves as always having advantages from the system, like always, you know, being able to travel, being able to work, being able to go. But what we, if we are on the other side of the fence, we are those who are not able to travel, we are those who are not able to work, we are those who actually have to kind of limit our contacts, and this is not for a certain period of time, but this might be kind of indefinite. So um, it, it might be actually the case that uh, this, um, layers of kind of separation are uh, becoming even more complicated, complex with the introduction of the crisis and therefore like vaccines or uh, like health passports or whatever else uh, we uh, now discuss as a society. The other thing I wanted kind of to mention and introduce for you to comment uh, is the following, that before that we were very sensitive as a society to um, yeah, disclosing our private data, at least willingly, you know, to consenting. One thing is if someone is spying or collecting it against your will, and the other is if you go and say, you know, here's my data, use the way you wish. So I think we were very protective. But uh, now with the coronavirus, many people, I mean, your opinion is by far like not, not the only one. Many people would say, okay, but what do I do with this privacy if I get sick and if I die as a result? So I want to give it up, which means that fear of contamination, fear of dying, fear of losing the loved ones becomes much greater than fear of losing privacy. Uh, and again, we come back to this topic, whether this is temporary uh, or whether it's now permanent. So are we actually, I mean, is it going to benefit us as a society? I mean, yeah, this is something I would like to comment. You, you would like you to comment. 
will it benefit as a society if uh, there is no privacy anymore, that everything is um, transparent? Oh, no, of course, in my opinion, no, mm -hmm. as I already gave my argument. Uh, um, first of all, uh, that you will be forbidden much more things when the state knows more about you. But also, um, here I you you touched upon the uh, segregation, which can lead to discrimination, and that is a very dangerous thing. If uh, some there are someone develops application, and there are already applications that can see the temperature of people around like 200 meters in the, uh, around you. Uh, that's the people who I don't even know will see what temperature I have. I don't want them to see my temperature. Maybe I'm whatever. Maybe I have some other disease, or maybe I have a bit of, like sun sunburn, and they will be looking at me as as I am the one who is going to spread coronavirus. You know, when coronavirus, but people will see you as the one who who spreads the disease. They will look at you in a very bad way, and you will become the one who boo. They will booing you. They will be doing that just because they are afraid and this fear this is this very close to xenophobia or very close to homophobia it can come to that level that we are so afraid that the people around us are going to kill us that we will be willing to kill them first i think it leads to stigmatization right when actually also uh, you, you gave it this example of temperature i mean a person with the tens and, and hundreds of different um, diseases our symptoms might have temperature as one of the symptoms symptoms but because we're all kind of afraid of coronavirus we will stigmatize the person so we will think that and i mean like simplify everything boil down everything to oh he must be a carrier of coronavirus therefore i stay away therefore i actually um yeah like let him know that he is dangerous he should be out he should be kind of taken away from from me from us collectively so like it will be much easier to single out people and to actually uh, restrict them for whatever today is coronavirus but uh, tomorrow it might be something else but if i will trust this government details of my fingerprints of my family income of my medical record of my uh, record of my education my family's education whatever whatever i will trust this government with my data because government in its turn already have so much data on us, if they want, if they would want us to repress us or segregate in a certain way, for instance, immigrants or people with no health insurance or so on, they would already do it in a way. But because governments are democratic, they give us an illusion that we have a freedom to do whatever we want, even though they have this power over us. As long as they are democratic, yeah. as long as the moment they turn to authoritarian regimes this will become a very dangerous thing i mean we believe that we trust the government because the government is democratic and we as citizen we will always be choosing the parties that are democratic we yeah but what about others what about those uh, far right or far left uh, so I would like to say that I fully kind of emphasize and understand what you are saying about a kind of playing by the rules, but I think that what is happening now, we start playing like with the rules. So we actually see that rules are being drawn up in front of our eyes just here and just now. And again, the, today the, the cause or the motivation is very uh, benevolent. Uh, but um, let's just try to see whether it is going to be always good or whether these new rules of the games, which we do not fully know, which we do not fully understand as a society, might later be turned against us. And we're here not to judge. Uh, we're here just to say that this is the situation and uh, let's kind of make the choices which would be conscious and which, which would be actually help us uh, kind of live better off and not um, degrade us as the the society together thank you for watching uh, please let us know what do you think about it uh, did we miss any arguments uh, did we miss any points uh, what's your take what's uh, how do you feel about the situation do you feel protected or do you rather feel um, actually feared and uh, fearful and, and, and panicking just because uh, these changes are so rapidly taking place. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.